Well, good morning and welcome to Windy Hill Kennel. Uh, we are down at the kennel this morning and this is Dreamers Kids. These guys were four weeks old yesterday. Uh, so today they're gonna get their collars and next week they're gonna go out in the grass with everybody and play. I know, I see you, you're a good boy. Um, so they're doing super, I'm dying. I just can't wait till they're old enough to get their haircuts. So we'll give them a haircut about five and a half weeks old. Um, and I know some of you have checked in with me. Oh, where are these bugs coming from? Oh, I hate them. Goodness. Um, I'll probably contact everybody right before I do it just to make sure you want a haircut or not want a haircut. Um, I love little schnauzers when we give them a haircut. I think they're stupid cute and, uh, I can't wait to do it. They have just phenomenal, they have their mother's coats, that's for sure. You're a mini me, aren't you? Yeah, you're a mini dreamer. Um, they're doing really good. Really, really are. Uh, they're fat. They're happy. They're playful. I'm hoping they stay right here where I can get a hold of them. And um, so we're going to start. I'm going to start with him because he's busy and I'm afraid he's going to take off. So this is the only male in the litter. I really don't know why I'm chipping them. Everybody can tell their puppies, I'm sure. 8230. So he has got... Look at the coat on this guy. They're just phenomenal. You're just nice babies. Yes, you're just nice babies. I know. I see your face. You look grumpy. All right, so I'm going to put a red collar on him this morning. And they're going to wear these till they go home. Uh, there's going to come a point where we can't see their collars until we give them a haircut. And then I can usually make the collar smaller because we get rid of some of that hair. Uh, he's doing really good. He is active he's playful dreamer is still loving him she lays with him all the time that's why they're so fat so he is three pounds 3.5 ounces as of today and it's noisy down here today you can tell because we've got dogs out in the play yard so everybody barks at everybody else when they're in the play yard so this is a noisy morning around here all right so let's do the mini me dreamer so I'm going to give her a bright collar. I don't have any neon pink adult collars right now, so she's going to get stuck with a adult collar, not a baby collar. Or a, a green collar, not a pink collar. Oh, this one's going to fit really good. So that'll show up on that dark coat. So she's got a neon green collar. Don't get on them. I hate it when ants get on them. Ugh. Um... They haven't had a bath yet this week. I know, I see you looking at me. She's so fat, and she's got such a heavy forehead. You almost can't see her eyes when she's out here. But awesome coats. Awesome, awesome coats. Three pounds, 5.5. This tail has never stopped. Your little tail is gone all day. There it goes. I know, I know I got your tail. Can I get you? Can we do you? Oh my goodness. Come up here, we're gonna do you next. So this is the female with the white socks on the front. And I know you're such a pretty girl. You're such a pretty girl. She looks like she's actually gonna be like a buff Merle, which I don't know what else to call it. See underneath there? This is going really, 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 really buff and then the Merle part stays really dark. So I'm just dying to see what she turns out like, but I think she's gonna be a buff Merle. I know, there's probably no such thing as a buff Merle. Your nose is black, so realistically, a black dog with a blue with a blue coat is normal, 8239. But I swear this is chocolate. Let me see your nose. No, it's a chocolate nose. But the chocolate Merle is going to stay, she's going to turn buff, and then she'll keep her dark colors in the Merling. I know, you're such a pretty girl. Such a pretty girl. I know. Yeah, I know, you're scared. Let's see, we're gonna give you a purple collar. And, all right, so she's got a purple collar on and she'll keep that on. Uh, she can go home with it or you can change collars when you're here. Okay, scoot over, let's see what she weighs. Three pounds, 10 ounces it looks like. She fills the whole tray. You guys are gonna be big babies. Yeah, you're gonna be big babies. All right, so let's do the other Merle. This one's a little bit smaller than her, but not a whole lot. I know, you're a pretty girl too. 
I like the yin yang. She's losing a little bit of this yin yang, yin yang down here on the bottom, and she's getting a little bit more buff in there. But she's got really pretty coat. She's doing the same thing her sister is. She's turning real light cream under there. I'm dying to cut their coats. I hope you guys with the Merles decide you want a haircut because the Merle spots just pop out like crazy when you get they get a hair. Look at this tail. I see this tail. It's wiggling. It's still wiggling. All right, give me your give me your collar. All right, so you got a collar on. She says, oh no, what's on my neck? All right, let's see what she weighs. I don't know, did I microchip her? 82.29, I don't know why we're chipping them, but I chipped them. Move your butt. Three pounds, 0 0.5. Yeah, she's 10 ounces lighter than her sister. All right, let's set you over here. Are you sitting there just watching so diligently at what's going on? I know, you're such a cute baby. You're such a cute baby. Look at the color. Yeah, this black, you can see the line on her back is the last thing that's going to change. But she's definitely, she might end up being a platinum silver. I can't tell. She's got a ton of black hairs in there too, but it's so hard to tell right now where it's going to go. Oops. Is that your ears whacking the pan? I know, I see the tail going. Ooh, she says, that feels so good. Oops, you're sliding off my lap. All right, let's see what you are. You are 82.62, and we're gonna have to let this collar out. You got a big neck. No shoes. No shoes. Shoes are not your friend because you can bring Parvo in on your shoes. Her hair is so thick it's gonna stick over the collar. Let me see if I can tuck your hair under the collar. There we go. All right, so she's got a yellow collar. And she is three pounds, 1.5. All right, Munchkin. So that's the skivvy on these guys. Um, they're doing super good. I can't wait for them to get old enough to come out here and put them in the yard and let them play. We'll probably, probably put them out here with Dreamer maybe the first time in the grass. And uh, then after that, they go out on their own uh, with, from Dreamer. Let me move my scale so they don't want to go hide under it. We've got our trusty baby wipes. Um, so, a couple things. I'm telling everybody this on the video, so if you don't want to watch anybody else's video, you'll hear it from this video. Two things this morning. When you make your vet appointment for your vet uh, well check, first of all, it needs to be within the first three days you go home, if possible. I understand that all these idiot vets that are still doing the, using COVID as a crutch to keep their doors closed and not let as many customers in. Um, in fact, we have vets in our area that have said they may never open their lobbies back up again. They like it this way where clients have to wait in their car. So yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. I like to go in. Luckily, I have a vet that lets me go in. At least one of them does. So um, when you go to your vet or you make your appointment, you need to ask them what is included in their well check. Um, it's, I guess it's not something I ever thought you know, I would have to tell you, but I'm finding that I do because I've already had that problem with a client that could not go in with her puppy for its first check. It's allowed, they're allowed to go in with all the subs, uh, subsequent appointments, but not the first one, which I don't understand. And uh, when you go for your well check, you should get a stool sample check where they do a, a, a float on your stool to make sure the puppy has no issues going on. Who's crying? You are. Um, you need to um, make sure that uh, they do, of course, they're gonna check their ears, look inside to make sure there's no ear infections. They're gonna look at their eyes, listen to their heart, listen to their lungs, and they should do a stool sample absolutely with your very first visit. It lets them know the condition of the puppy, if it's got worms, if it's left over that, you know, we missed when it was here for all of our wormings, which when you worm a puppy, you do not get rid of everything. If those worms have been big enough to lay an egg, then the wormer that you give your dog does not kill the, worm, the eggs, it only kills the adult. So the trick and the reason that we worm so often is that we want it to, once those eggs hatch out, we want to be able to worm the dog again before they've had time to lay eggs. So that's kind of why it's a vicious cycle in the middle or in the beginning 
to make sure that they're worm free. So that stool sample is very important. Um, if you do not have a fresh sample the morning of your vet appointment and you collect it the night before, please do not leave it, go out and get it out of the yard. Don't get it off of a paper where they did it yesterday morning. You wanna get a fresh sample, which means um, if they potty the night before and they have a good stool sample, then go ahead and take a plastic throwaway spoon. Just get a little spoonful of it, put it in a, a baggie, zip it shut, and put it in your refrigerator. Um, it needs to stay cold because heat degrades the stool sample. And so if it's been sitting for 24 hours, you're not gonna get a good test on your stool sample. If you don't collect one, um, a lot of times the vets will use what they call a loop and they'll actually go up in the rectum of the puppy with this little tiny plastic uh, loop, spin it around once and pull out a little bit, little piece of poop and they test that. So it's not life or death that you don't take a sample in, but it's better if you take a sample in that, that they have enough of it that you can uh, have it tested easily. So um, just kind of be a conscientious and, and an advocate for your puppy and find out what your vet is going to do on your first visit. Um, also, if you um, are a person that's going to be a do-it-yourselfer, uh, when you come, let me know because I know a lot of people want to do things themselves because of the price of the vet visit. And there's nothing wrong with that to a certain extent. Uh, there's things that you can't do at home, but there are absolutely things that you can do at home that will save you a lot of money. Um, and if you're one of those people that like to be a do-it-yourselfer, because I'm a do-it-yourselfer, um, let me know when you come and I'll be glad to point out different things you can do. I'll show you different products that you can purchase. And I'll give you names of companies that will work with you and uh, help you in purchasing what you need to treat your own puppy. So... Um, other than that, uh, the other thing I wanted to, to let you know, I've had other people tell me that I have not told them on every video about crates and bowls. I do carry crates and I do carry bowls. If you do not have a crate and you're looking for a crate and you're not what, sure what size to buy, I carry only the sizes here that you should use as an adult with this puppy. You do not need to start out on a tiny crate with this puppy and then go to a large crate when they're older, you can start right out with a large crate. It does not mean they're going to never learn to be housebroken. Um, they've got to have room to potty when you're not around when they have to potty. Because they're little, they're not gonna hold it. And they need a place to lay down, eat, sleep, go to the back of the kennel and go to the potty. And uh, so I do carry crates. You're welcome to call me about them if you need to, and I always have them on stock. Uh, we do carry the bowls that screw on the crate that keep your puppy from flipping the bowl over or getting to where it's tall enough you can keep him from pooping in the bowl, which I've had dogs do that here uh, with pans on the floor. Puppies will back up, and for some reason, uh, it's not a toilet, but it ends up being their toilet. And um, it's nice when you can get them up off the floor and they screw right on the side of the crate and you don't have that problem. So, um, for now, I hope you've enjoyed their video. I know we're running a little behind this week. Uh, Vanessa has been out with a kidney stone and I had to have a colonoscopy, which I lost about a day and a half on. And Vanessa lost a couple days, so we're running behind. But um, if you need to uh, ask me any questions, you're more than welcome to call me. If it's just general questions, please just wait and bring those with you for when you're going to come pick up your puppy. If we are sending you your puppy, uh, when it gets closer to time, if you've got a list of questions, call me at that point and I will be glad to go over all of your questions with you and see if I can help you out with some answers to what your questions are. I know I had to move my foot, guys. My foot was going to sleep. So, um, for now, I guess we're going to get out of here and it's lunchtime and we're going to head for lunch and then start again after lunch. But have a good day. Um, we are over the hump day. We're on our way down the slide day. No shoes, no shoes, no shoes. And uh, so have a safe week and a blessed weekend. And uh, we have a beautiful day here today that God gave us. But tomorrow we're going to have a storm. 
and they say it's going to be the worst storm we've had all year. So all of us in Ohio have learned that when they say one thing, sometimes it never shows up or happens. So I'm hoping that one doesn't happen, but we'll see tomorrow. So have a good day, and I'll talk to you later.